Do I sound gay to you? Do I sound gay to you? Do I sound gay to you? What's up you guys? How are you doing? You know there's just certain topics that you just have to dive in further and explore? This, my friends, is one of them. As many of you know, I decided to get onto YouTube back in October as a means of connecting with you guys more and also of giving myself a voice, which I never really had. And in the past six months, it's taught me a lot about myself. And I've gotten a lot of feedback about me as, as me, that for most of you is entirely new. And the one piece of feedback that keeps coming up that seems to be so polarizing, ironically enough, is my voice. side you have team Sam is so gay ah oh, his voice is so femme that vocal fry what is that vocal fry I mean I didn't even know that was a month ago and then on the other side you have a team that's saying the exact opposite about my voice how can this be now while I could ask you all to endlessly debate about my voice I don't want to do that. What I'm much more interested in is what having a gay voice, whatever that means, what, is, what does that mean in 2020? Is this something I should be ashamed of? Is this something I can use to my advantage? What defines having a gay voice? And if it's true and I have this gay voice, why do I sound like this? Like this, like this. So I needed to get to the bottom of this. First, let's understand what makes my voice gayer than somebody else's. And second, I want to understand if in 2020 I'm somehow supposed to feel less than for having that voice. So to start things off in part one of this video series, I'm inviting my dear friend, queer comrade, and LGBTQ plus activist, Nick Falzone on camera to learn more about my voice. Vamos. Nick Falzone, would you say I have a gay voice? Yeah, I would say you have a gay voice. <laughs> I think I have a gay voice too though, but like mine's just a little bit more like higher pitched. How would you define even having a gay voice? Is it the, the inflection at the end of everything? <laughs> As gay men growing up, mm -hmm. we're, we tend to emulate our you know, women figures. So whether yeah. that's you know, Lady Gaga, our favorite pop star, or whether that's um, our mothers being gay, I think we kind of look more towards women in our formative years, mm -hmm. or who we see in the media. Like your pitch and your voice and like how high your voice is, like that's a nature thing, you know, mm -hmm. like that is not something that you learn, mm -hmm. but the inflections that you have and like the cadence, like you said, like that's all nurture. If you took a woman's voice mm -hmm. and if you edited her voice and lowered it into a register, like a male register, my hunch is that it just sounds like a gay man. Talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing, show-stopping, spectacular, never the same. So, but if so, for you then, it probably is more about like the way you talk, not necessarily like the how it sounds. Exactly, I think it's, I, oh, I think, I think yeah. it's probably more about the cadence and about the inflections mm -hmm. and the dragging on at the end. Just, like, I don't know, that's that's all I can figure. But that's super interesting. But I think like but some then people would say like, oh, it means if your voice is like super high pitched. And then maybe works. this one like mine, that's more like, like, like vocal fry. Or yeah. And I mean, like, I'm fortunate enough to, like, I don't have to code switch, like, that much within my job at all. What's that? Code switching? Yeah. So if you're in a group with, like, your friends, like, if we're out and just talking, like, you're talking in your normal voice, normal yeah. inflection, like, doing your normal mannerisms. Yeah. But then at work, you might, like... You turn the switch off. Yes. So you uh, might be a little bit more, like, lower your voice. Or, like, you know, don't have as much, like, yeah. charisma in your voice. Mm -hmm. That's That would be code switching. Isn't that sad that you have to tone down charisma? You have yeah. to tone down personality. Yeah, for sure. To accommodate society. And well, that also, I think, speaks to our own, like, having a little bit of shame around, like, having a gay voice. When did you first start, like, getting called out for being gay? Probably in middle school when I was hanging out with, like, only girls. Okay. What about you? Was it later? Yeah, no, it was earlier. I was getting called out, like, before I even understood, like, what gay was. Really? Yeah. Um, 
And I think that was probably because like I've always had like a little bit more of like a high pitched voice and like my mannerisms have always kind of been yeah. like more animated. But do you think then that had those, you know, fourth grade bullies or those four, fourth grade comments not been made, do you think that your personality would be different today? I mean, of course I like cared, like it like sucks to be bullied, but like I don't think I let it like change who, You're, who you are. Yeah. I had a lot of girlfriends. Like I had like friends that were girls and I also like, I was in fifth grade. Oh, you legitimately had like, Yeah, so I girlfriend. still had like girlfriends, yeah. In fifth grade? Yeah. What? That's, so that's why I was that's like, crazy. whatever, like anybody that's making fun of me, I'm like. <laughs> I got a girl in my eye. I have a girlfriend, so, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but that's not everybody's experience, right? Like I think a lot of other people have like the inverse experience. Um, or on the other side of the spectrum where like they probably like did have like big like noticeable effects on yeah. how they speak or you For know, sure. you're conditioned to feel some kind of shame. So we carry that like mm -hmm. through into adulthood. I look at those who have them, you know, maybe like a more feminine voice. Mm -hmm. Today, I'm in a mindset where it's like, hell yeah. Like, you are so unapologetically yourself. You're one of them. Uh, it's, like, impressive. It's super attractive, I think. That, I, like, that confidence is very attractive. Yeah, honestly, like, I think, too, like, having, like, a little bit of a lisp, which, like, also we haven't even talked about. Like, that is so synonymous with gay voice. Lisp. Like, having a lisp. Yeah. yeah. I think a lisp is, like, like just, just a slight one is, like, so attractive. It yeah. is. I find it unattractive if somebody's putting on an act, whether that be right. to, to be more masculine than, than they really are or yeah. to be more feminine than they really are. Yeah. I think just the authenticity of a person and like having someone have the capability of revealing themselves, mm. like that's hot. Something that I like really hate on any sort of like dating app, anyone that has in their profile, oh, no like fems. no, no femmes allowed, like yeah. that just sit so poorly with me. Yeah. I like it that's that's an immediate like you're just so confused and lost. Or you're just like in a different state. You're just in a different state of Yeah. Like, like you're in a personal acceptance yes. journey. Yeah, I don't yeah, want yeah. to be You're in a that. different journey. You're, you're in a different, different journey path. and I'm not going there with you. <laughs> it's like there's probably things there that like you need to unlearn. Like if you are like hung up on like the way somebody's voice sounds, like mm -hmm. you're probably not in a place where you can like get to know somebody on like a better and like deeper level anyway, right? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you again for coming on. Yeah. And I love you to death. Thank you. I love you too. Long live the vocal fry. Uh, yeah. It's like the grudge Man. noise. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whew. Well, that was helpful. So one big takeaway from me that I learned in that conversation is that, you know, whether it's nature or nurture, my voice isn't really something that I can control. This isn't something that I wake up and decide to dress in every day. This is just the way that I sound. We all can't really help the way that we sound. You know, the most exhausting thing to be in life is inauthentic. So if we spend every day of our lives trying to be and act and sound like somebody else and how society might want us to sound, we'll never get anywhere. My takeaway is just to continue being myself. And I think you guys should do the same. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to stick around for the next one because it's going to be good. I love you guys. Stay true to yourselves, be you, sound as you, and I'll see you next time. As always, if you like this video, like, comment, and share for a chance to be shouted out in next week's video. And also subscribe to my channel and turn the bell notification set to on for any Sam related updates. Ciao. Nos vemos pronto. Nos vemos en pronto. Como es? We'll see each other soon. Bye.